Well, I'm not a pro player. Let's start there. I mean, gaming isn't even something that came easily to me in the beginning. I had to really chase it down. And I never thought that I would end up making a career out of it. And I definitely never imagined it would become so entirely core to who I am in the best possible way. I love competitive games. I love action adventure. I love shooters, RPGs, horror. I love that one where you're just like unpacking little things from boxes to cute music. I believe games are for everyone. I think it sounds corny when you say it out loud, but I've been in the industry a long time and I don't have time for gatekeepers anymore. My name is Stephanie. I also go by Hex. I've reviewed games on TV, I've streamed games on the internet, and I've pretty much made the video game community the center of my world. I spent a lot of time chasing escapism as a kid. I spent a lot of time in fantasy worlds. You know, I, I struggled to concentrate at school. I was a bit of a space cadet, reading fantasy novels under the desk or drawing. I think I was just always somewhere else. I loved games, but we didn't have any consoles at home. My parents were a little bit old school and I think they were worried that having video games in the house might make my attention issues a little bit worse, which, you know, it's fair. It was around 1999. I was searching online for something fantasy related and I came across a role-playing game called Lensmore. And I think you could just play it right out of the browser. It was a, like a multi-user dungeon or a mud. Yeah, retro. I hit connect and this wall of text just rushes past. It was completely text-based, but it was this living, breathing online realm with people from all over the world who were role-playing characters in real time. And I mean role-playing, like every action, every word, every detail. It was like being in a book. I guess it was the first time I really saw the true potential of what video games could be. And it was entirely text-based, so I could sneak it past my parents. Pretty crafty, Ben Dixon. I'll be honest, I got hooked on it pretty quick. <laughs> I used to sneak out of bed every night and have to smother the modem with a pillow to hide the dial-up sound from my parents. They wouldn't catch on to what I was doing. But of course they did. The school called my parents and told them that I was falling asleep in class. But you know, I was a teenager and socially awkward, so of course I'd rather live in a world where I was a warrior elf. Eventually I was old enough to build my first PC and the world of video games really opened up to me from there. So in the mid 2000s, there was this video game review show on Australian TV called Good Game. It was the first time I'd seen video game culture represented on screen and I just loved it. it was kind of informative, but quite cool and grungy as well. And it definitely had a bit of a basement vibe to it, which was very much the gamer stereotype at the time. When I heard they were looking for a new presenter, I sent a bunch of reviews that I'd written into the show's producer and I got the job. And it was just unreal. It was like stepping through the screen and onto the set of the show that was so familiar to me because I'd been watching it for so long. Well, yes, I do like the video games. And here's why. But around the same time, one of the guys that hosted the show left, so I would be replacing him. And the show's small but very loyal audience did not react well. It was pretty tough. Women weren't really visibly in the video game industry very much at that time, so people weren't interested in what I had to say. They just kind of commented on my body a lot and sent me a lot of really awful messages. Any mainstream media attention I got was like, cool gamer girl likes to hang with the guys, because my being there was kind of a novelty back then. What I didn't realize was something else was happening at the same time. We had a kid's version of the show as well, and all of these younger girls were watching and seeing a female presenter talking passionately about games. And then I started to receive all of these letters and like personal handwritten notes and drawings and stuff saying how cool it was to see a girl up there talking about video games and it gave them the confidence to share the stuff that they were passionate about and be nerdy and stuff. And now I meet those girls and they're like 20 and they say, you're the reason I studied game design and that is just so awesome. And the show just grew from there. We toured conventions and we did live stage shows. This little basement gaming show had become a fixture of the Australian gaming community. Well, after eight years in TV, the gaming landscape had changed a lot. 
games were becoming more accessible. Australia was slowly getting access to high speed internet and everything was just moving online. So it made sense for me too as well. But it was a weird transition. <laughs> The community that I'd found through Good Game and the way we'd been able to connect online through this shared passion was just so unique and genuine and it was growing. But TV isn't really designed for interaction. When I started live streaming, I had to kind of lose the veneer of presenting a little bit and just be more myself, be more open, which was hard because it was kind of like this wall coming down and it was a thick wall because, you know, I had to really fortify myself in the beginning. It's becoming a weird castle metaphor. She's always been this really strong leading woman in the Australian gaming industry. So she's someone I've always really looked up to. It took me a long time to see that representation and to be able to recognize my place in this world. So having someone like Steph being completely unapologetically themselves and absolutely thriving in this world is amazing to look up to. We're going as fast as my little legs can carry me. Sprays it everywhere. Oh, wow, I got ruined. Back Pocket was really born out of all of this energy and longing. I really want to say desperate longing for video game discussion content in Australia that felt fresh. A few friends I'd worked with at the ABC formed a company and suggested we try live streaming a kind of chill variety show. We just kind of hang out and chat to viewers and talk about games, like everything we've been playing and all the new releases coming out and just life. We talk about life. The show is also therapy. So, how is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and because of this more relaxed way of interacting with the community, I've made all of these friends, like the kind of friends that I never had when I was working in TV because I was too afraid to talk to people. And now we're like gaming every night, sharing ideas and talking to each other and just hanging out and it's super nice. Being a part of Steph's community today is just such a humble and warm experience. The friends that I've made in Steph's community are genuinely friends for life. Uh, we hang out uh, most nights on Discord, uh, we play games together. The transition for her between, you know, being on TV through to Twitch and online and whatnot, it gave us the ability to sit down and be like, I can say something to you, but I can have a conversation. I can ask you questions about a game you played six years ago and it's not gonna feel unusual or forced. I can have a conversation with a person. I think throughout my career, I've always been asked what I love most about video games. And I've always been like, oh, it's so uniquely engaging or interactive storytelling is changing the media landscape. But the specific community around video games in Australia, I've just not encountered something like that anywhere else. And you don't have to be good at video games to be a part of it. You can play all the video games or just one or none. It attracts people who are cool and unique and interesting and progressive and funny and so, so welcoming. And these are maybe qualities that people haven't associated with gamers in the past. And I've realized that throughout this whole weird journey that I've been on from wanting to play video games to getting a job in video games to where I am now, the thing that I love most about video games is that community. I know, super corny. Well, awful. <laughs> but it's true. And anyone who isn't playing video games is missing out.